Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to build this torched wooden Arizona flag. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is cut 8 of these at 40 inches. Uh, these are just 8 foot sticks of 1 by 3 from Home Depot, so they're 2.5 inches wide by 3 quarter inches deep if you want to rip them down to that size. But we're just going to cut 8 of those at 40 inches. All right, so now that we got all these cut, uh, I'm gonna take some of my scraps and uh, they're kind of different sizes because I usually cut off um, the raw edges for these boards just so that they're nice and smooth. But um, we're gonna take two of them and cut them in half so that, uh, let's see, these two are about uh, 15 and a half inches. So we're gonna just cut them in half at like seven and a half or whatever that is. And then those we'll be using to hold each separate part together when we glue them. And then the other two scraps that I have, I'm just gonna cut them both at this smaller length. So that'll be 13 inches. And then those we will use to hold the two bigger pieces together at the end. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is just figure out which sides I like better of the wood. So I'm just gonna quickly go through and just figure out uh, which sides look better. And this is kind of just personal preference. And then once I figure that out, I'm just gonna take some 220 grit sandpaper and just sand over the, the faces. And then this is just to make sure that, you know, any of this stuff or any of these like random marks that come on them when you buy them from the store, uh, just to get rid of all those so none of that shows up later and then we'll be ready to burn them. All right, so now that we're all done sanding, we are ready to go ahead and start torching them. All right, so for torching them, uh, I'll just kind of show you what I do and what I like. Uh, obviously you can torch them however you want to and however dark, but um, let me just show you what I do. So you just... Move nice and slowly and then try not to stop anywhere. Otherwise it will make like a really dark spot. All right, I just like to do something just like that where there's, you know, dark spots and you can see the grain, but then you'll also see the stain through it. But obviously you can burn it lighter or darker, however you want. But uh, we're just gonna go through and burn the rest of these and then we'll be ready to put them together and stain them. All right, so now that we got them all torched, we can go ahead and kind of arrange them how we want. Um, I think I'm just gonna put the ones with these bigger knots down where the blue is because uh, it might be harder to like tape a line over them and stain them, uh, stain like the, the sun rays on the top with the bigger knots. So I'll put all those on the bottom and then I'll try put all the cleaner ones on top. But once we separate them, we'll be staining the blue ones first and then putting them together. But for the top section for the sun rays, we'll be putting those together and then staining them. So once I got these kind of laid out how I want them to, then we can go ahead and stain the blue ones and then uh, we can get both of these sections put together. All right, so I think I kind of like that. Um, I got these knots sort of scattered around down here and then I have a little knot in this corner and then a little knot in this top corner, but hopefully uh, those won't cause any problems. But now we can go ahead and stain these bottom four for our blue stripes. And to stain these ones, I'll be using this uh, Varathane water-based wood stain and it is tinted in navy blue. Uh, you can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's, I believe they both have a water-based wood stain. 
I prefer to use a rag when I stain, but um, you can use a stain brush or a foam stain brush or whatever you prefer, but I like to use a rag. Make sure you mix it up real good before you open it. And then I'm just gonna take my rag. And on these uh, on these blue ones, we wanna make sure that we stain right on this inside edge right here a little bit, just so that in case the boards aren't perfectly flush, there's no like white showing through. So just go ahead and dip it in there. And I'll usually do like two or three coats, depending on how it's looking, but I like to have it nice and dark. And then on this inside edge, you just wanna do something just like that, just to hide that little line in case it is sticking out at all. And uh, I just like to leave this bottom edge clean. That way um, I can just have a clean, solid border all the way around. All right, so now that I got a second coat on these ones, while those ones are drying, we're just gonna go ahead and get these ones all glued and nailed together. So I'm just gonna bring it up on the table and I'll show you how I do it. All right, so to connect all these, uh, I'll just be gluing between the seams, and then I'll be putting these uh, these two backer pieces that we cut. Uh, I'll just put them on four inches from each side. So if you just measure over four inches on the bottom, four inches on the top, and then do that on both sides. And then we'll go ahead and put it on the inside of that mark. And uh, I'll be pin nailing them also. I just have a 18 gauge pin nailer with inch and a quarter nails and those should be short enough to where they won't go through as long as you don't have your depth set too deep. And then I have here some uh, 12 inch clamps that I'll be using to just clamp it together while I need it. So first we're just gonna set them all up like this. And then we can just run, run our glue down Uh, it might not be necessary to uh, glue between them and also glue the backs, but uh, I like to do it just for a little bit of extra protection. We just want to wipe that down with our finger. And this will be the same exact way that we'll use to attach the, uh, the blue ones all together once those are dry. And then we can just lay them down. And then I just have blocks under mine, but if you have like a flat, a nice flat table, just so you can push on them to get them nice and flush all together. And then we got our block so I'm just gonna take my clamp and then if you have like a speed square or something you can just put it up next to it just to make sure they're all fairly straight and then this block doesn't have to be perfect but you just kind of want it centered you just want it roughly centered on centered between this gap Clamp those together real nice. And then I like to just quickly put a bead down just right here where this one's gonna be. And then also on the back of this one. And then that shouldn't ever go anywhere. And then just put two. Two nails per board should be fine. And we can go over to this other side. And you want these to be as flush as possible so that your 
Uh, it'll make staining them a lot easier. All right, and then that's what that looks like. Uh, I might also add these two bigger clamps right here. I might just add those right in the middle just cause there's like some tiny gaps right in here just to close those up and then just give it a little bit of time to set. And then by that time, our, our blue boards should be done drying. So then we can go ahead and just do the same thing to the blue boards and then we'll be ready to uh, go ahead and stain the upper half. All right, so we got the blue one all clamped together and that's drying, so now we can go ahead and start staining this one. So the first thing that we're gonna do, um, I got this kind of little diagram here for you to look at. So you're gonna pull from the top on each side and then you're gonna measure three and a half inches down, seven and 10. 10 will just be the bottom of it so you won't make a mark there. But pulling from the top at the three and a half mark, you'll make a line and at the seven mark, so. At three and a half, you'll make a mark right there. And then at seven, you'll make a mark. Then you'll do that on both sides. And then pulling from the left and from the right, you'll make it a mark at five and a half, 10 and a half, 15 and 18 and a half. Uh, my, my lines aren't very in proportion. I'm sorry about that. I thought I was gonna make them a little better than that. But so from each side, it will be five and a half, 10 and a half, 15 and 18 and a half and then um, those will be all the lines around the edge of where the stripes are gonna go or where the the rays are gonna go so I'm gonna go ahead and mark those out and then we're just gonna make a super light line using like a level or a piece of wood uh, you just want to find the center mark and since these are 40 inches obviously the center will be 20 so you'll make a mark right at 20 down here and just do this as small as you can or as light as you can and then we just want to go through and just make really light lines of where all of our rays are going to be. And then, um, and then that will make it a lot easier for when we tape them off to stain them. All right, so now that we got our lines drawn on here, uh, the next thing that we gotta do is get our star ready so that we can figure out where the star is gonna be on here. Cause we're gonna tape off all these lines and then um, I usually cut the tape and we don't wanna cut into our star area cause then once we spray it and paint it, uh, you'll see that. So you could print a star out on the computer, but uh, I don't have one printed out. So I'm just gonna draw one out on here and then cut it out so then I can trace it. So if you have one of these little compass things, then I can just show you a quick and easy way to uh, draw one out. All right, so to do the star, first thing that you're gonna do is just make a, just make a point somewhere in the middle of your cardboard or paper or whatever you're doing it on. And then you're gonna measure an inch and five eighths from the point that you made and then you're gonna make a mark. So right there I got my point, and then right here I got my little inch and 5 eighths mark. You're gonna adjust your size to, so that it goes from this middle right to that mark that we made. And then from there you're just gonna make a quick circle. All right, so there, now we got our circle. And then from there, what you wanna do is we're just gonna draw a line straight through our circle, straight through the middle of it. So if you just take, you just take a little straight edge and just put it right through that dot that we made. And then if we make a line straight through the middle, just like that, then from here, what you wanna do is just extend your 
the distance of this thing so that it goes out a little ways, maybe about that far. And then you're gonna go on either side where you made this intersection right here and you're gonna make a mark like that. And then a mark like that. And then you're gonna do that for both sides. Just like that. Then that's gonna give us, if you draw a line right through those intersections right there, And that should be perfect, perfectly uh, quartered out circle we have. Then from here we're gonna go like this and we're gonna go from this point and this point and then we're gonna find the halfway point between here so we're just gonna make a mark like up there and down here. Then you're gonna go from this side and make that same mark on top and bottom and then where those intersect will be our halfway point between, that will be our halfway point between that. And then from here, what you wanna do is you're gonna grab the distance from, from the top right here to this intersection right here. So that will be right about there. And then you're gonna go from this intersection and then you're gonna make a mark onto this side over here. Uh, then we're gonna get the distance between this section and that intersection right there. And then we're going to make a mark right here. Then we're gonna go from that mark with the same, uh, the same measurement and make a mark like that. Then we're gonna go from this one make a mark like that and from here to there this will also be a mark right here so total we have five marks and then we are going to draw pretty much make a pentagon using those five marks so we'll go like this and then we'll go like this uh, sorry if I'm making this confusing at all. All right, so there we have a pentagon. And now all we're gonna do is just continue all of these lines and we're just gonna make a star. As long as I did this right. If anybody is printing out a star just on the computer, it looks like this one's about eight and a quarter inches from edge to edge. So if you wanna print it out and try and print it out to that size, then you can feel free to. But now we can just go ahead and cut this thing out. So I'm just gonna grab a block, move that out of the way so that we don't break that. So now we can just go ahead and cut this thing out. If you have something that's not quite as thick as this, it would probably cut through a little bit better. All right, now we got it all cut out, I think. Looks like one of my sides is a little bit taller than the rest of them, so maybe I'll just put that one on top. So now if we take our, so if we take our upper half, what we wanna do is just position this so that this um, point right here is just centered right in the middle of this line going up. And then these two, these two edges right here just run straight along with this, uh, this lowest sunbeam right here. So, just line it up 
Let me see. So I got that one kind of centered right in the middle. And then this one lines up right with that, that lowest sun ray. And then that one also lines up right there. So we can just trace it with a pencil. And now that we got that put on there, we are ready to go ahead and start staining it. All right, so when I stain this, um, I use uh, frog tape and then I use delicate surface just so that it doesn't peel anything. Uh, I can link this down below if you wanna get some of this. And I start with the yellow stripes first. So what I'll do is go through and the middle sunbeam is red and then it just switches off each direction going from there. So then on either side of it, it will be yellow, then red, yellow, red, yellow, and so on. So what you'll do is just tape off right along your line. Then you wanna make sure that you press it down just so that it makes a good contact and that it, so that it won't uh, leak on you. And then you just wanna tape it all the way down to the star, just like that. And then for some of them, you will just be able to use the other half of the tape if it's like a smaller strip. So right here, I can just cut right along that stripe. And um, you can leave the tape over your star. You just don't want to cut through the star at all. Like if you're continuing, if you're cutting down on this, you just don't want to cut into the star at all. Otherwise that will show up. But what I'd recommend doing is you just get it down and then take a straight edge and then just cut all the excess that goes into the the other rays that you're painting just like that and then that's gives you a nice line and then we just want to tape off the other side all right so each one will look something like that See, I just got it taped off right along the line on either side. But you just wanna go through and just tape all the, every other one off and then we can stain the yellow. And then after that, we'll be ready to stain the red. All right, so when you got them all taped off, it'll look something like this. So I just got one, two, three stripes on either side. So a total of six. So uh, make sure if you, when you put your tape down, just run over it, even with like your finger and just make sure that it's, um, make sure that it's pushed in there really good. Just cause uh, this stuff is supposed to not have any bleeds. So um, you all want to make sure that it's pushed down as good as possible to prevent any of those. And uh, now we can go ahead and stain our yellow. I'll be doing two coats of yellow and I will be using this Barathane water-based wood stain and it is tinted in noble yellow. Uh, I got it from Home Depot. They should have a similar color at Lowe's in the, uh, the Minowax shade. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop this guy open and we'll start getting some stain on. All right, so when you put this stuff on, you just wanna try and not have your, uh, your rag or your brush or whatever you're using too wet, just so that there's a, a better chance of it not bleeding through. And then you just wanna go ahead and And then just do your best to get it between these seams also. And it should be fine if you get it in the star area, if you didn't tape off the star area. That shouldn't cause any issues because the paint should cover it without a problem. All right, so that's what that looks like. Now we're just gonna go through and get all these yellow ones stained and then just give them a little bit of time to dry and we'll do the second coat and then we can pull off all this tape and tape off for our red stain. All right, now that we got two coats on there, we can go ahead and pull our tape off and see how our, uh, how our lines turned out. See, as you can see, it pulled up a little bit of like the, the torch look, 
but I mean it, it it still looks fine but that's why I just I like to use the delicate stuff just so that it doesn't take off too much and you don't end up with ruined wood and also when I'm brushing that on I usually brush from the tape onto it because then it kind of like pushes it down as I'm brushing the corners and then that also lessens your chance of getting a of the tape peeling up on you while you're brushing against it or something but so far they all look pretty good The, uh, the nice thing about doing the yellow first is that the red will cover any of the yellow that overlaps. And then you just gotta try to be a little bit more careful with your red so that it doesn't bleed onto your yellow. But I think the biggest part, the biggest concern is just right in these seams, as you can see, like right there, it came through a little bit. But uh, just have to tape those off a little bit better when we're doing our red. But yeah, we just gotta let that dry up a little bit. And then we're just gonna do the same exact thing that we did for the yellow, except we're just gonna tape off the yellow this time, and then we'll just um, go ahead and stain the red stripes. And for the red, I will be using, uh, this will be Minowax, so this is from Lowe's, and it's the water-based wood stain, and this one is tinted in the um, scarlet red right there. And that's the one that we'll be using for the red. All right, so I've given the yellow a little bit of time to dry, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the red. And uh, one thing that I'm gonna do, I think, is just uh, put a separate little piece of tape and just try and push it, you know, just like a short little piece and just try and push it down into the crack, um, just on all these seams right here. And then hopefully we'll get really nice, clean red stripes and it won't uh, come over under the yellow at all. But I'm just gonna add those in there and then I'll do everything else the same and uh, we'll get the red all, all two coated and we'll see how it looks. All right, so now we got our two coats of red on there. Uh, let's go ahead and pull off this tape and see how we did. All right, let's see here. You can see how my uh, my ep my extra tape in the crease worked. Oh, it looked like it worked pretty good. Um, like I said, I just added those just little pieces just to, in those creases, and then I just pushed them in just to give that a little bit of a better chance of, uh, of turning out. Try and make sure you do this all at one time, uh, just so that your tape doesn't like start to stick too good or it doesn't, you know, end up peeling anything off when you do take it off. Looks like I had one spot right here where I got a little bit of bleeding. Let's see if I can just scrape it out of there. There we go. And I mean, if it bleeds through a little bit, it's not gonna be noticeable when it's just hanging on the wall. So I don't think you have to be too worried about any of that, but. But overall, it's uh, looking pretty good. So now we just wanna let that dry, and then we can go ahead and connect the two pieces, and then we'll paint our star on there. All right, so now that we got both of the sides stained and put together, uh, now we can just flip it over, and then we're gonna secure it together from the back. All right, now that we got it flipped over, what I'm gonna do is just take out my glue, and then I'm just gonna run a bead just along one of the inside seams. And then I'm gonna use my two, uh, these are about 20 inch, um, just like bar clamps. And then I'm just gonna line this up. And then I'll just put one on either side, just like right on the inside of where these two, um, where those two blocks are holding the other pieces together. 
And then I'm gonna take my 13 inch blocks and then I'm just gonna run some glue on the backs of these and then I'm just gonna set these just right on the insides of each of these blocks. And then just kind of center them right in the middle or uh, right in the middle up and down wise. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tack this on there with my uh, 18 gauge nailer and my inch and a quarter nails. Go on right and then do the other side. All right, now we can pull these clamps off. And now that we got that put together, we can um, figure out our star. So what we're gonna do is just take our cutout and then we just wanna put it um, right where we had it before when we outlined it. And then we just wanna make a new outline. And then what I'm gonna do is just outline it right around the star and then when I tape it off, I'm gonna tape it off just like, maybe like an eighth inch past the um, my pencil mark. And then that will just make sure that there's no pencil marks that are visible. You know, none of these right here will be visible. And then uh, that'll get, just give it a really nice clean edge. And to tape it off, I'll be using the same um, delicate surface frog tape just so that I don't peel any of the stain off. And then I'll also just use paper or cardboard or whatever and just cover up the rest of the flag just so that the, the paint doesn't overspray on any of it. And to spray the flag, I'll be using this. It's a Rust-Oleum metallic all surface paint and primer and it's got a copper rose color. And uh, this will just give it a really nice copper look. All right, now I got it all papered off. And let me just show you. I got it uh, taped off just a little past the pencil line. Just so it will cover that real good. And now let me just show you, show you how it looks. I usually try doing a lot of light, just really light coats just so it doesn't build up too much. All right, now maybe I'll let that dry and then I'll do another coat and then it'll probably take like five or six coats and then we'll be ready to just seal the whole thing and we'll be good to go. All right, so I am done spraying it. I sprayed like, I don't know how many coats I sprayed, quite a few coats on it. And uh, I just wanna pull it off before the, um, I just wanna pull the paper off before it sets too much, otherwise it will have a higher chance of peeling up on the um, on the edges or whatever, like it'll, it might peel up on the star. All right, let's see how clean our lines are. Looks like they held out pretty good. All right, now we can just let that dry real good. Then we can go through and just seal the whole flag 
and throw some hangers on the back and we'll be all done. I'm actually gonna throw my hangers on real quick before I go ahead and seal it. Um, I just like to use these little sawtooth hangers and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put one on either side and then I'll just measure down from the top and then just get a consistent measurement all the way across so that when you hang it, it will be level. Um, so I'll just go ahead and just measure down maybe like four and a half or five inches on either side and uh, you can use any style picture hanger you want to if you want to use the one with the wire or the one with the little like rings on it but I like to use these. All right, now we got these on. I just measured down uh, four and a half inches on each side and then made a line across and then just went right through the line. And then I did the same on this side and now we can go ahead and spray it. Uh, I like to use this Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel and I'll do two solid coats on the front and back and that should give it some good protection. And that is what it looks like all finished up. Please let me know if you guys have any questions down below and I'd be happy to answer them. And thank you so much for watching.